been a record-breaking year of severe weather. Wildfires across Western Canada this summer, including a state of emergency in B.C. With climate change a top-of-mind issue for many Canadians, a party defined by its own position on this file should be able to capitalize. Instead, the Green Party has been caught in their own internal wildfires. There is an open warfare between the new leader, Annamie Paul, and the party's federal council. One of the three Green MPs defected to the Liberals back in June. And Annamie Paul, who's desperate to win a riding on her third try in downtown Toronto, says she's not campaigning anywhere else for other candidates. So how can the Green Party convince voters they can unify a country if they can't unify their own party? And where's their detailed plan for Canadians to actually see? Let's find out. Joining me now is the leader of the Green Party of Canada, Annamie Paul. Uh, Ms. Paul, always a pleasure to have you on the program. Um, let's get the obvious question out of the way. You and I have spoken about it and you've answered it before. You are running mainly in the Toronto Centre riding. You failed to win that riding twice. You're trying to win it a third time. I understand that. But you're not campaigning with other ridings, essentially leave, barely leaving your own riding. How do you call yourself a national party leader if you're only working to get yourself elected? Evan, <laughs> there are so many um, premises and assumptions in what you just said. I don't even know where to begin. Uh, first, uh, as I said, uh, we're going to be spending the bulk here, but I didn't uh, rule out traveling to other ridings uh, with, uh, uh, to support uh, our candidates. Uh, I've also said many times that we've learned a lot about how you can support candidates and connect with voters across the country uh, using modern uh, techniques. Uh, we've seen uh, the Conservatives do that, for instance. Uh, it's, it's successful and I think more authentic. Uh, and I, I mean, I don't know how to put this uh, so that uh, so that it sinks in. But in my case, uh, I was elected during the second wave of the pandemic. We've had two waves since then. I'm in a totally unprecedented situation. All the other leaders who are running are incumbents in their riding. Uh, is I don't I don't think that it's reasonable or fair to expect that uh, I can run a campaign in the same way that they do when I'm running under a certain set of unprecedented circumstances. Let's acknowledge um, division in your party has made a lot of headlines. Um, there's been obviously the defecting MP. Uh, now there's a Green Party candidate in BC who has attacked you on a Facebook post in the past week uh, for not helping other candidates. She, I'm not even going to repeat what she called you because it's pretty harsh. How do you tell Canadians your party is unified enough to deserve their vote when they are seeing that your party does not look unified at all? Uh, again, I'm going to push back on, on uh, the, the entirety of the question. There are several parts to it. Uh, we have hundreds of candidates running. I, I'm certainly disappointed to know that we have a candidate in Quebec that feels that way, but I think we can both agree, Evan, that every single one of the parties has had uh, hiccups with, uh, with candidates. It happens in every election, so there's really nothing new or specific to our party there with that. And what I see, uh, certainly in my case and in the cases of our strong candidates that are running, is that their focus is where it should be, which is on trying to win their seats, trying to connect with voters, trying to uh, share our vision for this next phase in Canada's, uh, in Canada's uh, future. Uh, that's really, that's, that's all that I'm doing, you know, that's all that I'm doing and that's all that I see our candidates doing and so I hope that uh, people will take a look at the candidates running in their riding and I think that they're going to see a person that they'd like to support. One way uh, for people to understand what you stand for is to release a detailed platform, for example, on climate. Uh, I know you have said you have the most ambitious climate target compared to the other parties, cutting emissions by 60% below 2005 levels by 2030. But there is no detailed plan to tell Canadians exactly how you would do that, how you'd recover from the pandemic. So again, what do you tell Canadians who a couple weeks left in the campaign and we haven't even seen your plan? Well, even when I was running uh, for the leadership, and even without all of the um, all of the the uh, the tools that the larger parties have, I was talking about those things. And during the entire session of Parliament, I mean, Greens were not waiting, and I was not waiting until an election to talk about how we could protect people during uh, the pandemic and how we could protect them yeah. afterward, how we could address the climate emergency and launch a green recovery, uh, and how we could do that, um, and how we you know how we could do that during uh, that session of Parliament and how we could do it now. So we've never waited for an election to, uh, to share 
there are plans. Uh, that being said, of course, we're going to be releasing a, uh, a full platform. It will be available uh, in the next uh, few days. Uh, but we have been talking about all of those things, Evan, for, I mean, I've been on your show talking about those things. So, so, but, if people but, want to know what our, our um, yeah. But so you, you're just saying, just to be clear, the, go, platform, go, go the platform will be released before the uh, leader debates? That's right. Just before I let you go, we're, the country will see you on the, in the two leader debates later this week. Um, what will be your key message to Canadians who have, haven't met you, a lot of them, you're the newest leader, but also they've read maybe a lot about the internal struggles. Okay, we've spoken about it. What will be your key message in these debates? When you watch the debate, uh, please take a look at, to see whether the plans that are being offered on the climate or, or on social policies are really going to give us the change that we need or if we're going to just see more of the same. And ask yourselves, if we elect the same people and send them back to Ottawa, uh, or can we expect anything different? Uh, especially when we recognize that we need a profound change in the uh, culture of politics. And so I hope that they'll come to the debate with an open mind. I hope that we'll have a chance to be able to share our ideas with them. And I hope that at the end of it, uh, they will vote for a group of people that are ready to get to work on their behalf. And I do believe that that will include uh, Green MPs. All right, well, we'll see uh, what happens. The big debate, and obviously for you, the first time on the national stage in, in a debate. Anna Paul, Green Party leader, a pleasure to have you on the program, as always. Thank you. Thank you so much, Evan.